Hey guys, Pastor Courtney here. Hope you had a great week. I had a special opportunity this week of involving my sweet Audrey Joy, my five-year-old daughter, in our NH Kids online service. And we had so much fun. Her job was to hold up this tray of props to help us illustrate the point that God gives us what we need to keep going. And so she held all the props for the Bible story until it got too heavy. And at that point, I swooped in and helped her and helped illustrate that point. And she did a super great job. I was so proud of her. But the process of getting to that end result and getting everything recorded was a little bit crazy. There were a few hiccups. At first, the tray was too heavy and the job was too hard. The lights were too bright. Bright. She needed a break. She needed a drink. She asked a lot of questions. She talked when she was supposed to be quiet. She got frustrated easily and she was distracted most of the time. So pretty standard for a preschool age kiddo. Now she's my daughter and I love her unconditionally. And I knew that she was trying her hardest most of the time and I know her heart. And I had confidence that we would get to the desired result at the end. And that being said, I tried to help her along. I tried to redirect her to the task at hand. I tried to answer her questions. I tried to give her the time and space she needed when she needed it. We even had to stop a few times to give her a break and that was okay. So we got everything done and filmed and afterwards, a friend helped me realize how much my interaction with Audra is like our interaction with God. Now the differences between myself and God are obviously many, okay? But I have been thinking about that parallel ever since, and I wanted to expound on that in our Devo a little bit today. You know, how often do we tell God that life is too hard and our burdens are too heavy? I know I've said things like that before. How often do we question him? Do we talk when we really should listen to him? How often do we get frustrated with his timing or distracted from his plan by what's going on around us? Sound familiar? And yet, it's so beautiful that like a parent with their child, he is gentle with us. And I want you to know that that gentleness is powerful. Now, I know powerful gentleness kind of sounds like an oxymoron, but stick with me here. In Galatians 5, through 23, we learn that gentleness is a fruit of the Spirit. It's something that God cultivates and produces in our life when we draw near to Him and abide in Him. And I often think we treat gentleness like a lesser fruit of the Spirit. It's near the end with all those other nesses, you know. But even though it's not as glamorous as self-control or maybe as desirable as joy, exhibiting gentleness is a wonderful way to imitate Christ and show others what he's like. In fact, the Bible goes out of its way to demonstrate Jesus' gentleness. In Isaiah 42, 3, it says that the Messiah would be unusually gentle telling us that Jesus would not break a bruised reed or snuff out a smoldering wick. And Jesus affirms his own gentleness in Matthew eleven twenty nine. 29. He says, I am gentle. I am humble in heart. And I'm so glad that we serve a God who is gentle and he is patient with us. In 2 Peter 3, 9, it reminds us, the Lord is not slow in keeping his promise as some understand slowness. Instead, he is patient with you. He's patient with us. He is gentle with us. A lot of times people confuse gentleness with weakness, but really gentleness is the quality of having controlled strength. It's the strong hand, not the weak one that has to learn to be gentle. I can't tell you how many times in his two-year-old days I had to shout out to my sweet son Wyatt, gentle hands, gentle hands. <laughs> Maybe you've had to say something like that. The translation for that was, don't crush that puppy. Please don't smash that flower. Don't squeeze that. You know, he was learning that it takes control to be gentle. Take the Apostle Paul, for instance, arguably one of the roughest, toughest guys in the New Testament. I got kind of Southern there, sorry. In 1 Thessalonians 2, 7, it shows us how he treated others when it says, we were gentle among you, like a mother caring for her little children. And in 2 Corinthians 10, 1, he says, I myself urge you by the meekness and gentleness of Christ, I who am meek when face to face with you, but bold toward you when absent. And then in Philippians 4, 5, he writes, let your gentleness be evident to all. So that super tough Apostle Paul, he was serious about the importance and power of gentleness. A great illustration of this comes from a poem called The Village Blacksmith by Henry Wadsworth Longfellow. I have to say it like that because it's more fun. 
Now, this blacksmith is described as a mighty man with large and sinewy hands, and the muscles of his brawny arms are as strong as bands. So he's a tough guy. And yet in church, he hears his young daughter singing a hymn and is overcome with emotion. And with his hard, rough hand, he wipes a tear out of his eyes. And I think this is an excellent representation of the gentleness of God and the kind of gentleness that he calls us to. It's the capacity to go beyond what we are, to be moved by his spirit so much that we follow the example of gentle hands and a gentle heart. Our God is gentle. He's patient with us when we question him. He holds our hand when we're frustrated and he gently, ever so gently redirects us back to his plan. So today let's strive to be like him. Let's depend on his spirit today to help us let our gentleness be evident to all. Love you so much and see you soon.